The Toy Story trilogy is one of the best of all time. The story of Buzz and Woody and how they transition to lifelong friends touches the hearts of all who watch, and the pass off from Andy to Bonnie is one of the happiest sad moments I've ever seen put to film. It's wonderfully perfect. I have mixed feelings about a Toy Story 4 because it just wraps up so nicely. But did you know we almost had a Toy Story 3, which was nothing like the one we got? Check out my video on the Monsters Inc. sequel where we got into the full backstory of Pixar's history and how this almost happened. But here's a condensed version. Back before Disney owned Pixar, Disney distributed their films, but they had copyright over those characters. Meaning originally when Pixar was trying to break away from Disney, Disney still had the rights to the characters and the rights to the Toy Story movies. Meaning they had free range to do a sequel for the stories without even Pixar involved. They developed a section in their company called Circle 7, which started production on many sequels, including Monsters Inc. 2, which I've previously talked about, a sequel for Finding Nemo, and a new Toy Story 3. Eventually, these never came to fruition because Disney bought out Pixar and Circle 7 ceased to exist. But here is the story of what that Toy Story 3 may have possibly been. The plot starts when Buzz experiences some malfunctions and Andy's mom needs to send him back to the manufacturer to be fixed. It just so happens that that factory is in Taiwan. However, after hearing that there is a worldwide recall, it's determined that Buzz would be replaced rather than fixed. Woody, Jesse, Ham, Mr. Potato, Rex, and Slinky all ship themselves to Taiwan, set out to rescue Buzz. While we're in the factory, we get introduced to new toys through Buzz. And I'm sure there would be a whole onslaught of forgotten broken toys, similar to Sid's room, that are ready to be destroyed. Buzz would have learned that all the useless toys get crushed by a giant machine, similar to the incinerator in the Toy Story we know, which would have led him to attempting to escape unsuccessfully. Weirdly, the subplot from Woody and the gang would have had them found by a human and brought to a daycare where they would have tried to escape as well. And strangely, Woody and the gang would have escaped using a vehicle that would have been constructed out of a shopping cart, vacuum, and some balloons. Of course, that escape is successful. The team finds Buzz in the nick of time to save him. Although he does gather some slight injuries from the crusher, the gang is back together and they make their way home. Now, I like portions of this plot. I like the manufacturer angle and how we could see a new part of the world through the eyes of toys. And we get some great aspects that we actually saw in the Toy Story 3 we know, like the daycare. But it just feels like a middle chapter. It doesn't feel like a finale, like Toy Story 3 should be. There's no welcoming of the toys under a new owner and no pass off. And it doesn't really hit us in the feels in any way. Now, I know it's incredibly hard to improve on the Toy Story 3 that we got. It's a near perfect film. But let's see if we can improve this script for Toy Story 3. Now I don't want to change the overall structure too much. Buzz still gets sent away, the crew still ship themselves out to get him, but rather than having the daycare scene and multiple breakouts in the movie, let's just make this Buzz's movie. Before we get to the point where Buzz is malfunctioning, let's build into that plot. Now up to 3, Buzz has come to the point where he's come to terms with being a toy. He knows his role inside Andy's room, and he plays the hero in Andy's stories but he keeps on manufacturing scenarios that people need his help, and he tries to do impressive stunts trying to help them out and impress them. Woody at this point is just relaxing, and he doesn't understand why Buzz feels the need for adventure. Buzz just can't sit still. Woody keeps on arguing, he has Andy, he has his play sessions, he has a whole family of toys here. But Buzz, actually when he's not being played, during one of his stunts, he drops, and causes himself to break, and malfunction, and that's where the plot follows. We flash back to Woody and the crew many times in the film, but it's Buzz that we spend time with here. Buzz finally gets out of his box and gasps for air. He's in Taiwan and slowly realizes that he's in a warehouse filled with other boxes. He notices the lines and lines of toys. He's put in a container himself and put on a shelf. It isn't until night where he can really explore. He breaks out of the compartment he's in he realizes there are rows and rows of toys screaming and complaining. As he looks back at the wall, it seems to go on forever. He trucks forward, makes his way towards a window that has a crack open, glances back, and right before he's about to leave the factory, he sees a little toy with one eye missing, glancing up at him. The toy smiles, and Buzz, before he's just about to walk away, turns back and talks to him. We hear the backstory of the place. It's similar to a dog pound. Broken toys wait in carts for their part to be ordered in, 
And if that part isn't available, or that order doesn't arrive, that's the end for them. We see those toys that were once crazy and screaming in a different light. We don't see them as an endless row of toys. Buzz sees them as individuals. We solo in on them. Rather than escaping, he climbs back into his crate and waits. The next day, we see those toys taken out of the crates and placed on a table. Some receive their parts and are fixed and actually shipped back to the owner, while others are placed on a conveyor belt and are ready to be destroyed. We watch as that slow conveyor belt brings those toys to their death. Cut back to night while Buzz is trying to break every toy out of their compartment. But slowly, he realizes even the ones who can't talk aren't getting out. He realizes that they want to be there. They want to be fixed and they want to be sent back to their owners. If they escape now, they'll be lost. They'll never see their owner again. This is their last hope. They wait patiently on that shelf, waiting for that part, and they hope it comes in. They aren't in prison. They're pretty much in purgatory. Buzz, defeated, goes back to his crate and waits. The very next day, we see the same process. Toys being fixed and others discarded. It's until the third night that he talks to the group and has a battle cry that they should be trying to save themselves. And on the third day, he breaks the rules. He leaves his compartment open just a little bit and waits for the ones to be repaired and those other ones to be put on the conveyor belt. He dips out of his compartment he quickly and discreetly grabs those toys off the conveyor belt at the last second and hides them. As he grabs them, they're shaking, they're so scared. But Buzz calms them down and they wait for night until he can safely sneak them out of the factory. We get a montage of Buzz doing this time and time again as Woody and his gang get closer and closer. Until one day, as he's swooping, saving toys, who does he see in the window? But his friends. He pauses for a second, puts out a big smile, and then gets back to work and they both come to the slow realization that Buzz isn't coming home with him. He's found his place here. He's doing something worthwhile. He's always wanted to be this, not being played in a make-believe sense as a hero, but becoming one through his own actions. Woody and the gang make their way back to Andy without Buzz, and this trilogy doesn't become the end of the Toy Stories, but the end of Buzz's journey. Let me know what you think. Do you like this version of Toy Story 3? Of course it isn't better than the one we got, but I thought I'd try my hand on improving the script just a little bit. As always, thank you so much to my patrons, Adam Gray, Jeremy Jacobs, Jenny Average, Jeremy Robson, Gabe Marchande, Trevor Cowan, Gunnar Legland, Colleen West, Gerard Galifa, Estet Hemsage, Marco Perry, Roland, Aiden McShane, Lon Hudson, Kieran Hunt, Joris Koninen, and Brandon Warner. Thank you so much for your support, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.